all new flagship model by Audio Lab. This is their 9000 series compact disc transport, all aluminum case and base. Built very well. Alright, let's get into this, y'all. everyone it's TJ the stereo bargain file you all I am very fired up today to bring you all my full impressions video of audio labs brand spanking new flagship model the 9000 series CDT compact disc transport which basically just spins the silver disc and puts out a digital signal only so you will need to pair it up with some sort of DAC or digital to analog converter but before I jump balls deep into this impressions video first, I want to give a big, huge thank you, a big shout out to no other than Natalia and Joe, who work for American Audio and Video, a division of Jam Industries, because they sent me the flagship 9000 on a loan lease agreement so we could have this full impressions video today. So again, a big thank you to Natalia and Joe. I really appreciate it. So now let's jump into this, y'all, real quickly. I want to go over some size and dimensions with you all of the 9000. And then real quickly, I want to talk about some really cool features that the engineers incorporated inside with the circuit. And then, yes, I know a lot of people out there are going to want to ask me, Hey, TJ, how does the new 9000 series flagship CDT compete against Audio Lab's very own entry-level 6000 CDT? Now, about two and a half years ago, I did a complete video review of the CDT 6000. So down below in the description box, I will upload that link for you. And so, yes, real quickly, I'll give you my subjective, humble opinion of how they compete against each other. Now, remember you all, the flagship 9000 CDT is built on a completely different level. But don't get it twisted. For its price point, the Audio Lab CDT 6000 is a huge bang for the buck. I mean, I liked it so much, I bought two of them. Not only did I buy the silver model 6000, but I bought the black model 6000 as well. And sometimes you all should visit my community page where I upload a lot of pictures. Because I'm telling you, the 6000 CDT is probably in more than 50 pictures I have posted in the last two years. So now, I... After that, I will take you all for a close-up look. We'll go all the way around the transport. And then I want to take you all uh, and show you everything with the display screen. This is an IPS screen, which is 4 inches by 3 inches. And you all, I love this display screen. I mean, I can be sitting back 10, 12 foot away from the CD transport, and I can read the track numbers very easy. And then, after we do that, you all... I do want you all to hear how smooth this CD mechanism sounds, but at the very end of the video, most of you who've been around for a while already know what time it is. I'm going to have a bonus section at the very end of the video. So now, let's just jump straight into this. Coming in at a price point over here in the United States from Audio Advisor, that's who I would recommend if you were going to purchase the 9000 but it comes in at a price point of $1,500 U.S. I heard that correctly. $1,500 U.S. I was just like, oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. $1,500 U.S. But you all must understand that when it comes to companies' flagship models, yes, they have a lot more money incorporated in material and even labor when it comes to research and development. I mean, I challenge you all to go out on the internet and look up other flagship compact disc transports and you all let me know how much they cost. But another great thing about the 9000, you all, is that Audio Lab is actually incorporating a three-year manufacturer's warranty. Meaning, if you order one of these and you have any problems with it within those first three years, then yes, you can ship it back to Audio Lab, and that really gives you a good peace of mind. And I will recommend, highly recommend, that you all keep the original box when you buy the 9000 CDT. 
Anything I buy new, yes, I keep the box, even if I need to break the box down by cutting the tape and folding it down. But anyways, you all, let's go ahead and get to the size, features, and dimensions and some of the cool things that the engineers at Audio Lab incorporated with the 9000 CDT. First off, again, I know I've said this a couple of times, the chassis or the box and the base is all aluminum. And it's really thick. These side panels are thick. The front panel's really thick. The top plate's got good thickness to it as well. And having that overall little bit heavier weight of this unit, which comes in at 13 pounds, that's really going to help a lot with vibrations, especially coming with that high velocity speed motor that actually is spinning the disc. We want to keep that vibration to a minimal. And also, Audio Lab incorporated their new CD mechanism inside. I don't know exactly what the CD mechanism is. They haven't posted anywhere. I know the entry level CDT6000 has a Sanyo mech inside of it, but this one's completely different. And of course, we have our CD tray that sounds so smooth, you all. Look how smooth that was. Very smooth, y'all. I am impressed with that. Now, another thing they incorporated is the CD mechanism inside has its own power supply, and the CD mechanism also has been completely encapsulated. That's right, y'all. It's been completely encapsulated with electromagnetically shielding inside. And I was like, damn, that is really cool. And another thing that Audio Lab engineers did with the 9000 CDT is they have a new high performance, high accuracy crystal osculators that is controlling the clock inside. And of course, with the coaxial digital output in the back, we do have a differential line driver, which basically, in a nutshell, using that digital output, it helps to have, you know, lower noise from any noise interfering and it's better for longer runs like if you're going to run a really long uh, coaxial output so i'm going to go over the size and dimensions of the flagship 9000 again it's right at 13 pounds or 12.7 pounds now from one side to the other side it is actually 17 and a half inches across or 444 millimeters now, if we go from the front to the back, that is actually 13 and a half inches. And again, in millimeters, I think that is around 322 millimeters. And it sets up three and a half inches or 89 millimeters. So overall, yes, the flagship 9000 has some good size to it. And another thing, you all, this aluminum looks so much nicer than some plate stamped steel. That's one thing I got to give Audio Lab credit with. I really love the stylish look of the silver. And yes, they had the black model as well. So now it is that time, y'all, that I go over my subjective opinion how my entry level uh, Audio Lab CDT 6000 competed against Audio Lab's new 9000 flagship. But before I get into this, I want to let you all know. I've only had the 9000 CDT for about a week, but I've paired it up to many different uh, systems that I have. And I'm going to show you a quick video clip of that. And during this video clip, I'm going to show you all the difference of the color of the new 9000 series silver compared to the Audio Labs 6000 series silver. The silver color is a little bit different. And then at the end of that real quick video clip, I am showing like two pictures of my CDT-6000 and I'm showing the CDT-6000 playing a CD at the very end of this video clip. So let's go to it right now. One of my more revealing setups. Well, as a head, I had no way of knowing but under my feet I've also used the 9000 with my back bedroom vintage setup. Review coming soon of this big bad boy Sansui. Okay, I'm back into what I call the budget hi-fi room. As you can see, I've been using the 9000 back here as well. 
the 6,000 below, look at the difference between the 9,000 and 6,000 when it comes to silver. Big difference, huh? All right. And also in my living room with my more revealing system I've been using, the 9,000. Oh, baby. share with you all that very quick video clip because I wanted you all to see that with the 9000 flagship I was using you know from my entry level hi-fi systems all the way up to what most people would consider a mid-fi hi-fi system and the reason why I done this is because one thing I noticed with the 9000 you know versus the 6000 is that on my more revealing sounding systems the 9000 had a little bit more better performance gap in between them than something like my entry level system or my budget hi-fi system. I mean, I'm just going to tell you straight up, and I don't mean to sound snobby at saying this, because I'm a hillbilly country boy redneck, and at the end of the day, that's the furthest away I believe that you're going to get away from being a snob. But let's hypothetically say I have a hi-fi system set up and I have $600 in the amplifier, I have $700 in the speakers, and I have $200 into my DAC. Well, when I was comparing the 9000 against the 6000 in that aspect, you know, the most performance gain I was getting was topping out at like 3%. I know you all love percentages. But when I paired them both up to my more mid-fi systems that are much, much more revealing sounding, that's when that performance gap really started separating. In CDT, that performance gain went out to about five to seven percent performance gain overall over the CDT 6000. But here's the thing, y'all that was my very revealing systems systems that were anywhere between three thousand dollars US all the way up to eight thousand dollars US. So, what I'm trying to get at is diminishing return really does kick in hard when I'm using my budget or entry-level hi-fi systems. I am not going to recommend a $1,500 CD transport, you know, with my hi-fi systems that are under $1,500 US. I just didn't hear enough performance gain to consider that because the AudioLab 9000 is over double the price of the 6000 And does it sound twice as good? Hell no. Again, you all, I would put it from 3% to 7% overall. But here's the thing, on my more revealing systems, yes, I'm one of those audiophiles that will pay a little bit more money to get that last percentage of performance. Now, what was the difference that I heard between them? Because I know somebody's going to ask me that. Well, I actually used my CDs that I am very familiar with, and people love when I go over this with them. Here's some of the female artist vocals I listen to, no other than Ella Fitzgerald. She has such a beautiful voice. And no other than Chantel Chamberlain. She sings that song, Besame, Besame Mucho. But anyways, love Chantel Chamberlain. Bonita Muchacha. And no other than Susan Wong. Susan Wong is one of my favorite female artists, and her vocals just melt me, you all. And when I had the 9000 hooked up to my reference bursting composer DAC and my most revealing speakers, yes, I could hear the saliva of Susan Wong's lips. It was way more apparent than the 6000. Again, you're paying for just that extra little ounce of more performance and very good build quality as well compared to the 6000 CDT. Now, when it comes to male vocals, one of the number one singers I use is Michael Bube. Michael Bube can have a little bit of that SC sound when he's singing. And this really helps me to see how well my system can control Michael Bube's voice, but he is an awesome singer. Also, we have Chris Stapleton, 
And this is Chris Stapleton's Traveler CD. Love this Traveler CD. But Chris, Sta Chris Stapleton's CD starting over. This may be one of my top 20 favorite CDs. And then we have Jim Morrison. I absolutely love Jim Morrison from The Doors. I've been listening to Jim Morrison for over 30 years, you all. 30 years. And then, when it comes to imaging, you know, your soundstage imaging, the airiness, the depth, the localizations of the artist. One of the CDs I use is no other than Pink Floyd, live at Kenilworth, 1990. Awesome CD for soundstaging. And no other than Carlos Santana, Africa Speaks. This CD is amazing, y'all. And if you get your hi-fi system set up right, it can be right magical. That's right, you all, magical. But one of my favorite CDs to use of testing audio gear and speakers is no other than Jazz at the Pawn Shop. I absolutely love this CD. And it is in one of my top 10 favorite CDs that I actually own. And when I'm playing this CD, you all, and using the 9000 CDT compared to the 6000 CDT, yes, there was things that I've heard in the jazz at the pawn shop that I've never heard before. I mean, it was picking up the slightest little noises on that track. I was like, oh my goodness. Now, this was on my more revealing sounding hi-fi systems. And I know somebody's going to ask, well, TJ, what was that sound difference? Well, first off, you all, rhythm and pace, meaning the overall timing with the 9000 CDT does have a little bit of advantage. And where I noticed this is when I was sitting back listening to music, I was doing more toe tapping with the flagship 9000. Another thing is the 9000 CDT does a little bit better job with that digital glare. It really has it more in control than the 6000 CDT. And yes, the background noise of the 9000 CDT is darker than the 6000 CDT, meaning the micro details are really popping out. And overall, I got a little bit better dynamics. But again, y'all, at a cost, you know, I was getting a total, again, I will say it, 3 to 7% advantage with the 9000 CDT. Now, here's the thing, you all. I am being a little bit conservative because I don't want to put your all's expectations up here. Then somebody buy it and their expectations be down here. So I am being a little bit conservative. I do like the 9000 CDT a whole, whole lot. And yes, I'm probably not going to send this back on its loan lease agreement. I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy it. So, you know, I just wanted to make that short and sweet. I didn't want to blow a bunch of smoke up your all's ear hole. I just wanted to make it easy. Yes, the 9000 performs a little bit better. But if we were to talk about bang for the buck, you know, how much performance are you getting out of your dollar? Well, the Audio Lab 6000 CDT still holds that crown. Because when it comes for bang for the buck, the 6000 CDT by Audio Lab, that is a badass CD transport for its price point. Again, with the 9000, you're paying for that build quality and to get just a little bit more performance. So now, y'all, it is time for that close-up look, and at the end of the video, you already know, I'm gonna pop the hood. So now, let's get into that. I must admit, the build quality of the 9000 series is really on point. Now, before I go all the way around this CD transport with you all, I wanna go over some of the quick accessories with you. Here are two remote controls, the one on the left, is for the 9000 series and the one to the right is the 6000 series yes i like the look of the 9000 series a little bit better it's a good full size remote and as you can see down at the bottom you can switch between cd amplifier and network player so that's pretty cool if we look back here in the box you will see that we have a power cable so we do have a detachable power cable but it's actually three prongs instead of two prongs. I love that. Again, I am really 
and pressed with the thickness of steel on the side and on the front plate. Now let's go look at the back real quick before I power it up. Okay, here we are at the back of the compact disc transport, the AudioLab 9000. And as you can see, we only have digital outputs. There's no analog outputs because there's no built-in DAC in the 9000 CDT. But we do have two digital outputs. One's optical, one's coaxial. You would actually run that to your outboard DAC or your integrated amp or receiver or preamplifier that has a built-in DAC to it. But what's next to that? I cannot believe I almost forgot about this here in the back, y'all. This is very important right here. This is Audiolab's brand new USB HDD storage device on the back. Basically, it's an HDD hub. And what you would do, you would use a flash drive that's a FAT12, FAT16, or a FAT32 that is also HDD compatible. And what that allows you to do is with that flash drive, you can drop a lot of music files from your computer or your laptop. And then you can take that flash drive and plug it right into the back of the 9000 CDT to play all that music. But it only comes with one caveat you all and it is a pretty big caveat for me personally so let me take you to the manual and show you what i'm talking about okay y'all here we are in the manual and this is the playback from the usb hdd storage device and if we look down here you have compatible formats wma mp3 wave and aac and you can see they're all 44.1 and you can upload 48 kilohertz i guess through wave and then, but when it goes to playback, the buffer will downsample it to 44.1. But what's missing on this compatible formats for us audio files? Can anybody guess? Yes, FLAC files, you all. I love FLAC files. I would have loved to download FLAC files to that USB HDD storage device. That would have been really cool. But they didn't incorporate it. But maybe they would have needed a different clock inside. Maybe that would have made the unit a lot more expensive. I don't know. But with the Wave, we will still get that red book quality. It will go up to 16 bits and 44.1 kilohertz. That is the one I will be using. Yes, I did order a HDD storage device. And I will let you all know on my community page how that turns out. The engineers at Audiolab also said do not use this USB HDD hub as a power supply. Do not do that. That could be very bad news. But one of the only other caveats I have with the 9000 being the flagship is when it comes to digital outputs, we only got optical and coaxial outputs. This being a flagship, I would have loved to see something like an AES EBU balanced digital output or something like an I2S or even a BNC. That would have been really cool or even an HDMI. But I mostly do just use coaxial. Sometimes I use optical, especially when I'm comparing two different DACs against each other. That can be a lot of fun. But I would have liked to have seen more than just an optical and coaxial output. Then over here, you see we have our 12 volt triggers input and output. Basically, what that allows you to do, if you have a lot of different separates, you can turn them all off at the same time and turn them back on at the same time. Okay, let's go on down. Now here on the far end, you see we have our main toggle power switch. I love seeing this on audio gear. The front wheel had the standby and on button, but we have a main power switch on the back. And below that, you all know I love seeing this. This is a male IEC inlet, and we actually have three prongs all together instead of two. And three prongs I like better because you actually get an earth ground with it. Now down below that, we have our fuse holder. That's right, this is where the main fuse goes in it. So if the fuse ever blows or anything, you can just pop this open easily and change the fuse. And Audio Lab lets you know the fuse type down below. Why this is really cool with this fuse is because you don't have to take the top off and go inside and change the fuse inside by the circuit. It is just really easy to do right here. Okay, you all, let's go to the front. Okay, now it is time to take a closer look at that front panel. As you can see, it has a minimalistic look to it. On the far right-hand side, we have a button 
to turn it on into standby mode and next to that we have our selector knob and that is made out of metal feels really good to the touch and then of course we have our eject button next to the CD tray and let's go ahead and jump straight into this what do y'all want to do first you want me to open and close that CD tray so y'all can hear how smooth it sounds all right let's do it okay let's go ahead and do a code startup And I still have this uh, screen cover over the display screen. I will take that off just here in a minute. Here it is uploading. Going toward reading the tracks. Pretty quick, huh? So now let's go ahead and open the mech. And you all see what I got in there? Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and close it. Hard picking up this out of aluminum, though. And you see where the screen went off? I actually set that display screen to go off after 10 seconds. Really cool feature. Let's go ahead and close it now. As you all can see, that was very smooth. Now let's go check out this display screen. Okay, here's the display screen for the CD. When I'm playing a CD instead of the USB HDD hub. And I will use the metal knob I showed you all. We'll turn it to the right and each click, a track will go ahead forward. Now I'm going to turn it a couple of times. I'm going to go to the last track on this Pink Floyd CD, which is number 7. These are long tracks, so let's see how quick we can actually get 7 to start playing. Boom, instantly. We'll go back 1 to 6. We'll go back 1 to 5. And you can see just how quick it tracks. Okay, that is very quick. Now let's go inside the menu real quick. But another thing I want to show you, the knob, it will. You push it in, it will pause it. You push it again, it will play. And also, if you hold it down for a long period of time, you can either choose CD or USB HDDD. Of course, I'm going to choose the CD. But now I'm going to use the remote control to actually get into the menu. So I'm going to hit the menu button. I need to pull it back a little bit. Hold on. Okay, I got it now. I just had to hold everything right. We'll go to the menu. Here's our audio source select. I'll go in here and select that. I can go on or off or I'll go back to menu. Hit menu again. You got auto source. You got display options. What you want the display to look like. Let's go ahead and go in here. You can have it look like a home page or the audio lab. A symbol just comes across or the display off now if I go back in menu and I go over to display settings here's where you can have the timer down here where you can have how many seconds you want the screen to be on before it turns off then above that we have the brightness I actually had it on two and you can go all the way up to 10 to 10 yeah okay okay let's check out the rest of the settings I'm hitting the menu well, there's auto source, display option, display settings, trigger. You can turn your 12 volt trigger off and on. Language, standby. You can reset everything. You have different versions. And audio source select. Pretty cool. Okay, you all. It is that time. Okay, you all. It is time to pop the hood. But before I do this, I must warn you, it can be very dangerous and even fatal taking the cover off any kind of electronics. So please don't do this. And I tell you all what, Audiolab put a lot of screws in this top plate. There is 10 screws all together, and it's that Torx 7 or T7 bit that is really small. And also, if you take the cover off, you can completely void your warranty. And let me tell you, manufacturers will know if you take the cover off. Oh my goodness, y'all, this is outstanding build quality for a CD transport, which is Audio Labs flagship. And Audio Labs said this is the best CDT they have built up to date. Now, I was wondering why this aluminum aluminum was so heavy. It's because it's got two layers. That's right, y'all, it has two layers. It's got an inner thin layer, and the outer layer is very thick. That is awesome to see, but the most impressive thing for me is this CD mechanism is so quiet and smooth, you all. Even with the cover off, I can't hear it. 
My microphones are very, very good picking up noise. Let's see if you all can hear anything. That is crazy. Then over here, you see we have a nice size toroidal transformer that's probably big enough to power a small integrated amplifier. And then if we look, the CD mech is laying on another electromagnetic plate and it does have standoffs underneath there to lift it up. And then here, give you all a close-up look at this transformer. Looks like really good quality. I mean, this mechanism is so quiet. I think those are what they call decon capacitors. And if you look over here, we do have three voltage regulators. I mean, you normally don't see that many in a new age CD player. So we do have three voltage regulators. They're very good size. Audio Labs got some nice size heat sinks on them. And then we go on down and you see back here in the back, here's our outputs and one input. As you can see, this will be our coaxial output, our toss link output, and there's our HDD hub. And that hub is shielded very well. And as you can see over here on the coaxial output, I think this right here is part of the differential uh, line driver. To help kind of boost the signal and to have lower noise is what I got from that. But yeah, we got all kinds of nice capacitors. That's nice to see three voltage regulators in here, especially that size. Then we got an Omron relay. And then the AC mains coming in. Everything is shielded all the way to the tips. That is what I call paying close attention to quality. Great job, Audio Lab. Then you can see the ground down there is up on top of a post. That's really cool how they've done that. And another thing I want to show you all before we end this video is down in here you can see we do have a metal rod for the tracking of the motor of, this, of the actual laser. So I'm going to move it a little bit for you all. We'll change the tracks. There you see I moved it. We'll move it back. There you go. But this is so quiet, you all. And yes, this is built on another level than the entry level CDT6000. I mean, it's even impressive with how thick of the cables they are using as well. I want to give you all just one more really good clean shot. Because there's no pictures or no videos online showing what this looks like inside. So you all will probably be some of the first to see it. Another thing I really like is the front of this loading tray. Here's a magnet. And as you can see, the front of the tray is metal. It's not plastic. But the rest of the tray, yes, it is plastic. Let's give you a better look inside there. Okay, you all, that pretty much wraps it up for me today. Oh, wait a minute. I still got to show you all the front panel. All right, let's turn this around. I can't believe I almost forgot to show you all the front panel. I mean, look what is all going on in here. And this is just a compact disc transport. There's no DAC built inside of here. So one thing I want to show you all when we go inside here, look how thick the front panel is. Here's where it's coming over on the inside it is very thick then right here in front of you all let me get that in real good that's that selector knob that i was turning going through the different tracks as you all can see it is a very good quality smooth feel we do have some stands off standoffs coming off of the front panel getting away from it that is great to see then this little white cable we down here that's for your turn your power on and to put it in standby mode Let's go over to the other side. Now this is going to be your display circuit. So you see we have some chips on there. I mean there is a lot going on in here just to be a transport. And there y'all have it. Here I want to get that in perfect for y'all. And now you can also see where the CD mechanism down here, you can see 
what it's sitting up on top of. Audio Lab went all out on this one, you all. Even if we look up here really close, look how thick this is. I mean, that is thick. They did go all out on this one, you all. Big time. I mean, again, there's no DAC built inside. This is just a compact disc transport. It only sends out a digital signal. Okay, you all, until next time. Oh my goodness, you all, I forgot to take this off in the whole video. Well, you all got to see it first. All right. And this was TJ, the Stereo Bargain Valve. Look how thick that top plate was. Goodness.